happy morning to everybody. A great afternoon and a wonderful evening. Our heart, while we know of as a instrument for good health through blood circulation, and of course, heart also means that we say intuition. But some people don't, don't know, but heart means intuition. But this heart coherence, something called taking that heart into a coherent state has a lot of benefits. That heart elevation process that we are doing every day, if we can practice and get better at it, We, we have several benefits. Taking the body into an elevated emotion is changing the energy of the body. We all have a signature. So the earth has a signature. It's called Schumann's signature. It's Earth's energy waves are vibrating at about 8 hertz, which is between the alpha and theta state. So when we meditate, we are lowering our state. So that's why we feel one with the nature. We become very, very uh, peaceful like nature. Nature is peaceful, right? Relaxing, and there's no urgency in the nature, yet everything happens, of course. So we also reduce from the beta hertz state, we reduce our heart, uh, our body vibrations. Uh, the brain waves to a lower frequency and as a result we are in sync with the nature when we are in sync with nature we are very healthy general general concept but heart this heart when we take ourselves into these elevated emotions which are the love kindness care compassion and the same thing exactly happens when we are doing expressing gratitude we are going into elevated emotion so our body has energy signature if we are in low emotions and then those low emotions trigger a lot of lower thought thought feelings and as a result our energy signature is out of sync now see the quantum field what we whatever is our signature is what we go and access so whenever we change the vibration of the body, then we are changing our future. Because we are going and then putting a different signature and hence when you create something new. So by default, when we go in elevated emotion, we are changing the vibration of the body. Into what? Into something higher, something that feels great for us. So we are changing the vibration of the body by our heart producing the magnetic charge the mind which is thoughts producing the electrical charge so electromagnetic signatures that is the vibration that we are changing and as a result every time we go into elevated emotion we are changing our vibration energy and then as a result we are attracting that more of it into our life it's today of course when we are elevated we feel good about it right now naturally that art is making us feel one with everyone now, but it is what it's becoming a new reality. It will become a new reality. Generally, it has been considered that heart you can't control because it's all environment, people are triggering. But now we know that we understand that by relieving an emotion, also you can bring back, and slowly we got to train, like you know, becoming empty mind, we got to train our brain or a period. Same way, we can also train our heart to really, really, really the emotion so that we go into the natural higher states. And as, because as we change the vibration, every time we're trying to attract the same into our life. And so we're attracting those oneness, good things. And then as we are attracting them, they also go into the higher states by default. We become very compassionate. We feel one with everyone. It's going to happen. It has to happen because we're changing the signature, body vibration. That's why the gratitude is one is one thing about current yes i don't feel the difference with others so that's one thing but it's also changing the body signature 
when I say body, when you say elevated, you got to feel. You don't feel the normal level of the body. For example, when you go into the dining table, and then if you if the food is normal, then your expression is normal, right? Okay, so yeah, good food. Warning, food is good. If the taste is like super, then I say, wow, this is great. I love this food today. You know, there is a difference. So we need to go into that signature. When you are doing that, when you change that, when you go into the elevated emotion, then you are thinking, you feel, you're feeling beyond the body. You call it feeling beyond the body. Normal feel of the body versus feeling beyond the body. Just the way you have an intent which is greater than your normal thought. Visionary, exciting, cl clear. That is greater than the way mind thinks. So your signature will be something different than what you're coming out of the mind. Same way of body feeling also, greater than the way body normally feels. You got to feel that elevated. So when you do that, then we are clearly sending a different signature. We're changing clearly the vibrations and so different signatures are going into the uh, quantum field for manifestation. Of course, when we go into the elevated heart, then naturally, I said, it is going and making the brain coherent pretty quickly. It moves the brain into that theta and delta states pretty quickly. So it is helping our mindfulness meditation, definitely, breath meditation. That's a different function. Then the third thing, when we are going to elevated emotion, because see, our cells, the cell membranes are always constantly receiving information. So whatever the field that you have is what you're telling the cells, right? You know, your thought and feeling is what's going into the cells and they receive and then work in a way. And the research has shown that people who do this heart opening around meditation regularly, just over five days, if they do it right, and they're seeing higher immunity levels that are immunoglobulin, IgA, that IgA levels have gone up. So that means you're building more immunity. Being in higher states, because the thalamus gland right behind that heart, right there, it is there, it is very connected to the heart, which is playing an important role in this uh, immunity. So the IgA levels have gone up. IgA is the one which is helping to create say, more and more, more antibodies, as well as the you know, transformations of them into whatever that you want it to be as cells. So, when we are into elevated heart, then we are sending a different signal to the body, in the body. And so they are expressing new genes and so expressing new proteins, expressing the genes in a different way and expressing and hence producing new protein, building and increasing the immunity in many different ways. So that's immediate another benefit by when you're going to the elevated hearts because it's all feeling, thought and feeling are the ones that is going in and sending that information as signature and that's what cells are receiving constantly. So body biology changes constantly because if you go into this elevated heart state and elevated thought state, first empty the thought in your anapanasati, first part. Second part, we go into elevated feelings and go into elevated thoughts. We're going to learn that next week. Manifestation and power of thought. We're going to learn that whole of next week. So that Emptying from the past and then filling up with something what we exactly want. You know, when we say we change the future, we create a new future, we want to create a new future by having a different thought, but certainly having a different feeling in our body. And that's what we're doing, friends, from day one. So heart elevation is a good, good process to add to a meditation, which we are doing, and then practice it. Practice it. So relax yourself today. We have guest sharing and also we have uh, Katskins I will share uh, after the meditation and uh, so we'll close the session with that today is the business professional sharing so we'll have Divya from uh, Narim Palli from um, Austin I think Austin or Houston she's going to come and she's going to be sharing with us so relax yourself dear friends first let's go into our meditation Sit comfortably. Okay. Let's create meditation. 
Thank you so much for joining this beautiful group meditation. Very powerful. And as you relax into the energies, let's listen into one of the business professionals at a, a senior meditator. So I'll ask Sheetal to introduce Divya. Hello, friends. We have Divya from Dallas, Texas, to share her meditation journey. By profession, Divya Sheetal, is. Sheetal, two minutes about yourself. Okay. How are you enjoying life with meditation? I am really, really blessed that meditation is in my life. I have been doing meditation from 2010. Ever since I started meditation, my life has become so meaningful, so happy, so joyful. I am I'm really, really thankful for this meditation. I am able to balance my family life, um, work life, as well as community life. Uh, all of them I'm really, really enjoying and I'm feeling so purposeful after I started doing meditation. Thank you. Thank you. So today, um, we have Divya from Dallas, Texas to share her meditation journey. By profession, Divya is a physiotherapist. Divya started her meditation journey when she was 16 years old. Meditation, reading, write spiritual books and Sajana Sangatya helped her excel in academics as well as in her profession. She is force behind Meditation Magic newsletter and YouTube channel. Her only goal is to spread the teachings of meditation to one and all. She is a mother of two kids, still doing so much work for the community and society which is inspiring many. Let us all hear from her about her transformational journey and how she is balancing her family life, work life and service activities. Welcome, Divya. Yeah. Thank you, Sheetal. Thank you, Chandra sir. And thank you, Vani madam, for having me here today. And hello, friends. My name is Divya. I'm joining you guys from Dallas. And I feel so thankful for the internet today, which is helping us to connect with you all. I see so many people here. I know you are guys from all over the world. It's very wonderful thing that we're going to connect today. That's only because of the internet. I feel very fortunate about that. And I'm here today to share my experience, my whole spiritual journey, and how I started, and how, where I'm now. And my spiritual journey started when I was 16 years old. And that was a time I moved away with my parents to join a boarding school for better education. And the stress, and the expectations, and the fast-paced learning system Took a toll on me. I felt very stressful. I was unable to sleep at night. I had fear of examinations and many, many phobias. So as within a few months, nothing seems to be interesting. I lost interest. I lost my self-confidence levels. And it was life was so boring. And within a few months, I was in deep depression. So I don't know what to do. I have no direction in my life. And that was the time my mother, Padma, introduced me to pyramid meditation. I thought, okay, let me give it a try. So I used to meditate about 15, 20 minutes every day before my study hours and in, in between my classes. So within a few months of regular meditation, I regained my contents levels and I got interest in life. And I was able to sleep better and learning has become so much fun. I used to have so much of focus and concentration. And I used to literally say that if you ask me a topic in, in, uh, in my subject, I can tell you, which page, which side, and where, where is the picture and the page number. My memory was so crystal clear. So I, I used to probably once or twice, and I had so many beautiful, um, I, I graduated so many beautiful colors in my examinations. And since then, life has become more purposeful and meaningful. So next few years of my life, I read so many spiritual books. I attended many, many uh, events from, by PSSM masters. I met so many senior senior masters and asked them so many questions. And all of my questions are answered by myself within the meditation. So no, no, none of them have, have given the right answer to me. So I found the answers within myself during meditation. That was a wonder I really cherish even today. And later on in my life, next four, four or five years, uh, whatever I learned, I used to research on the concept in depth to understand it. I experimented in so many different ways and experienced the concepts 
whether they are true, whether they'll work for me, are they for daily life, are they going to help me in any ways. So I, I, I did experiment so many different concepts. I've experienced wonderful benefits out of each and every concept I've read so far. So next, after a few years, I got married. I'm, I moved to USA along with my husband, Kanishka. And being in a relationship took a toll on me, physically and mentally. And every day felt like a scary roller coaster ride. The life used to go up and down, up and down. I, I, at one point I felt, okay, I can't take it anymore. I have to quit. I have to go back to my, my parents. I have to go back to India. Then somehow I felt, okay, no, let me try. Give it a few more days, a few more years. Then I started to do meditation more and more. And I, I used to talk to senior treatment masters from, from India. And with their guidance, uh, I understood the meaning of the soul signs so that we all choose our own life partners. Before we are born here, we choose our parents, our partners, our kids. So with that understanding, I felt, okay, if I choose my own partner, so uh, this, this is meant to be my life. So I started working on myself. Every night before I go to sleep, I used to analyze, what is it trying to teach me? What is it lacking in me? How can, me, how can I be better? How can I give better to my husband? So with everyday practice, with everyday analysis, uh, I became a better person. I saw so many changes in myself. So reciprocally, my husband started changing himself. So we became good friends. Now we are proud parents of two young boys, six year old uh, son Rishi and six months old son Agastya. So more than we just support each other very well now with whatever life has thrown to us, we complement each other. We are there for each other for every part of the life. So as I move on to my life, next challenge I had was clearing the exam to, be, uh, to work in USA. The exam is called National and Physical Therapy Examination. It was very one of the toughest examinations for the medical professions. So to clear these examinations, I used three spiritual concepts. One thing is thought power, intentions, and affirmations. So every time I had a fear, I have a negative thought about the examination or myself, I used to affirm myself, no, Divya, you can do it. Your memory is good. So you can, you can work, you can study for 16, 14 hours a day. So every time I had a negative, uh, negative uh, thought, I used to replace it with a positive thought. So affirmations, thought power, and pyramid energy really helped me to clear the examinations. And next challenge I had was getting the dream job I want to. Despite of having all the qualifications and the work visa, I was unable to get in the job. So again, the spiritual concept that came into hand was law of giving. So I set an intention to myself, okay, if I find a job, I'm going to give 10% of my salary for the spiritual service. That was the intention I set for myself. So within a few days, miraculously, friends, you don't believe this, I got into my job within a few days. I got the call, I joined the job within a few days. So that was the power of love giving. So I still cherish the, uh, the, uh, the impact the love giving has given to my life. And now, even now, I have been contributing as much as I can from my salary to the spiritual service. So as I move on to my life, the next challenge, next hurdle I had was uh, becoming a mom and pregnancy. So like all the women in the world, I too had fears of being a uh, fear of labor and pregnancy, the changes that's going to be happen to my life after that. So with, even with the fears, I, I want one day in meditation, I started inviting a soul, asking the soul to be my child for this lifetime. So within a few months, uh, my thought manifested and I became pregnant. So my pregnancy was so wonderful. I used to come in with my, children, with my child, unborn child in my womb every day. I used to talk to him and say all the good things and tell, to, I have to tell him about all the, my day-to-day -day activities. I'm going to office, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say, I used to tell him everything. So I used to work full time and I used to travel a lot, about 60, 70 miles every day. So after six, seventh month pregnancy, it took my toll on me physically. So again, I committed with a child that, oh, I need to have a better job. It has to be close to my home. So I set the intention, the job I have to, I'm going to find should be within five to 10 miles away from my home. So within one month, I got it into a job with, which is five miles away from my place. 
And one more experience during pregnancy was in my ninth month of pregnancy, myself, my husband, and my mom were thinking of potential baby names. So Rishi was one of the names we were thinking. So uh, I was after lunchtime, I was relaxing in a reclining sofa. I put my finger on my tummy and said, oh, Rishi is your name. Within a few seconds, I got a huge movement from the belly, confirming that, yes, that is my name. So I kept it to myself, and uh, we named him Rishi. The whole delivery process and the childbirth was such a very awesome experience. I felt all the doctors and nurses are like angels. I was in no mind state throughout my delivery, and I have a wonderful baby and have a very not natural delivery. And uh, later on, I had seen many health benefits through meditation as well. I, had to, I used to have uh, migraines and I used to have psoriasis. So with meditation, I have healed completely and also 90% of my psoriasis. So me, uh, meditation has helped me in every part of my life. With every struggle I have, meditation is there for me. Meditation, spiritual knowledge are the two important factors that have transformed my life. And since I have seen so many benefits to myself, I felt like I have to give this same to the people around me. So with this motto, I started a new uh, meditation center called Cosmic Eye Meditation Center at my home. So through this center, I have been teaching meditation to people all around me. And also a new initiative called Meditation Magic. It's a new YouTube channel. The main motto of this channel is to gather experiences in the video format and to get, and spread the knowledge about meditation and spiritual wisdom to all the aspirants across the world. That was the main thing I'm doing right now. And one more recent initiative was, we have started a new Toastmasters Club called Mindful Masters Toastmasters Club. We are combining a Toastmasters program with mindfulness. So these are the things I am doing right now. I have so many more experiences I can share with you. The limited amount of the time, this is about in a thing in a nutshell about my life. Thank you so much, Chandra, sir, for having me. Thank you, uh, Divya. That's uh, wonderful. Thank you, Sheetal and Vani Madam, for coordinating. But this is beautiful, right? Mother of two young children, solved her health conditions. Psoriasis and uh, migraines. Uh, migraines. Migraine. Oh my God, that's dreaded, right? When you get migraine, you lose half a day. And for a girl to have psoriasis, and then that's always a tough thing, right? And then, but I think, you know, the power of uh, meditation are changing a thought and belief, just gets that. And then you're able to gain those memory parts significantly, clearing those exams in the toughest circumstances. And then and then finding those jobs and then looking at all those synchronicities, Divya. So that's amazing. Okay, thank and you. And I'll tell you, you, you spoke several concepts, I'm sure, for people it'll be new. You choose your parents, you choose your children. And you're talking to a baby, infant baby, when they're in the womb. They're all real. I mean, they're all, everything is energy, everything is works, everything is reciprocal too. So as we understand, as we read some of those books, we'll understand all these concepts, friends. Nothing is accidental at all. Everything is planned. Everything is attracted by our own energy and our own thought and belief. So with that, Divya, and then you working and then raising two children and then on top of it, sharing your knowledge and wisdom to people around using this Meditation Magic YouTube channel. Friends, that channel has amazing quality experiences in YouTube, Meditation Magic. So people who transformed themselves have given their experiences of all kinds. I also, I believe, spoke there. So please go and then watch the channel. Great wisdom, particularly people, uh, 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 many of them who are living abroad where Divya is focusing and coordinating. So she is giving selflessly. And then I would like to invite Karthikeyan, sir. Karthikeyan, sir, so thank you, Divya, for transforming thank yourself, for not only transforming, but sharing that with everybody around. That's great. That's what we see each and every time after finish six weeks of program. People are inspired that how do I give this to other people around me? And that's what we see. And then, and then I think I want to close up with the Divya's experience and say, age never, no bar. And then what you are going through, your job, your children. I mean, she's doing multiple things. 
raising children and then doing job at the same time doing this service work they are fabulous we have so much power in us and and when we have to talk about this then we talk about Kajkain sir his life has been full and his life has been consistently and continuously giving that selfless service without expectation so I remember you you have done so many things to so many people i know you had so many uh, incidents of constantly helping others and then i remember you talking about at one point even you helped our greatest actor from india cinema even amita bachanji in some situations particularly i think when he had that deep injury so could you share your experience and you know what does it mean to be selflessly giving Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Amazing, uh, wonderful experience of Sheetal and Divya. Uh, power of intention, power of thought, power of meditation. And first, you know, faith in oneself and you can achieve anything you want. If you are sincere, you are persistent, you have faith in what you are doing and what the main experience. Wonderful. Yes, so many things happen in life. You know, faith is very important. You know. Faith is very important. You see, in life, everybody goes through ups and downs. Nobody can say we have gone through only present experiences. Challenges come. Sometimes the higher you go up, the challenges are more. There are so many experiences, but coming to only one aspect uh, today, because uh, I was reading the news also about the Megara star. Amitabh Bachchan also got uh, virus. It doesn't spare anyone. It can happen to anyone. So that way nobody can say, I am very clever. And, and, but you know, recalling what happened about four decades ago to him, and uh, that was uh, the time he participated in this shooting of a film called Kuri. The, the, it was in the Bangalore University campus. He was a young man, you know, and uh, nearly four decades ago, we are talking about he's 77 now. And there was a scene where the the hero, that is Amitabh Bachchan, had to, I'm not using Mr. and Mrs. and all that, because in the story it doesn't come out well. So he, he was to dive over a table attack the villain. So Manmohan therefore was a producer. So they suggested we'll have the Duke. He says, no, I can do it myself. So he died. There was another judgment. Instead of landing there, he landed at the edge of the table, his stomach. And then he fell down. He became serious unconscious and all that. He was admitted in St. Philomena Hospital in Bangalore. Was, I was in charge of intelligence at that time. Uh, you know, the intelligence man has to be involved in everything. Whatever happens in the state, whether it's in the farmers or the workers or politics, or anything happening, anything will involve with the public people and all that. So thousands of people get alerted in the hospital because it was so popular even at that time. Though so his, his father, Hari Bunz Roy Bachchan was a great poet. You know, Hindi poet, his mom and his mother was Teji Bachchan, was a very dear close friend of the Prime Minister in Gandhi. So I got a request from the Prime Minister's office just to see what can be done with any assistance. In any case, crowds were also there. We were in. So I was to the hospital, St. Philomena's Hospital, and he was under treatment, he was unconscious. Then uh, this lady was there, Jay Badri was there, his brother Ajita Bachchan, I remember, Manmohan Das, I the great producer. So, so I spoke to them, I said, you need assistance and all that. So I went back, I reported to the Prime Minister's office what happened and also huge crowds even then were them. So next day morning, I went again, before I went to the office, I visited the hospital, crowds were there. As I entered the hospital, walking through the veranda, 
I met Dr. Butt, who was a very famous urologist from Christian Medical College Hospital in Berlo. I knew him. So he was coming the opposite side. He said, you, he asked me, Mr. Kathian, what brings you here? I told him, he said. Then I asked him, he said, I come for a small surgery. So while I was walking, he walked with me. In the veranda, we went to the place where uh, Jai Badri and Manmohan Desai, they were all there standing. The room was inside. So I greeted her. She said, what do you see? I said, he said, uh, she said, in the same condition. You know, improvement. So I, she took me into the room. I told Dr. Butt also walked with me. I'm just telling you how the destiny plays a role. Then uh, it was, um, he was lying like that. You know, it's a tall figure lying. And uh, she was worried. Then Butt asked when it happened it day before today, two days earlier. Then he said, can I have a look at the x-ray? So we, she gave the x-ray and he looked at it. The light was dark. He said, we'll walk, watch it in the sunlight. We came to the veranda. She also came. He looked at it in the sun and they told him, point out a place to me. He said, this is a, there's a perforation in the intestine. There's a perforation in the intestine, the x-ray showed. But he has been, that was 48 hours earlier. So there must be a lot of bleeding. And what is the plan? They have the said, no, no, my mother is bringing a team from the Bridge Candy Hospital from Bombay. They will come to the, they have to get the first class, um, all the seats to be removed because to carry, they will reach in the night. And then we'll take uh, Harry him to Bombay. He took me aside and told, but he said, I am not a specialist in this, but I can tell you from common sense, he is already breeding 48 hours. If they are going to delay, they have to open him up immediately. Otherwise, you know, it's risky. I don't think he will stand this journey and then another 12 hours and bother. So I, Jayamudhi was very, very, very polite, courteous. So I told her, this is what my friend says. She was said, okay, then we'll just, what do you suggest? The doctor said they should open him up immediately. They would have done it to him, but because he's a VIP, normally any ordinary person, they would have opened him up the next day, yesterday. And you people have been telling you won't take him to Bombay and doctor said they don't want to touch him. He showed me, sir, no, please, whatever you decide. I said, how can you decide? You have to tell your family has to be condition. But then Manmohan Dada came, Ajita Pachan brother came, he said, no, no, your mother is a very strong person. Everybody knows at that time. Very close to Indira Gandhi Ji, Prime Minister. She said, no, you must be taken only to Bombay. But then they will take time to another trouble was to come and go back and then do the surgery. So I said, this is what I informed the PM's office. You please advise them. They said, we have told you it's for the family to decide. I went back to my office. An hour later, uh, Manmohan Desai, Alita Bachchan, all of them came to my office and said, sir, I think we will go by what you said. We uh, Bombay also be concerned. They said they should work for me up immediately. So I went back to St. Philip Hospital, talked to the doctors. They said, we would have done that. But they were always telling, we want to get it done in Bombay only. Otherwise, we would have done it. But uh, once when you say, uh, we didn't want to take the uh, responsibility. But they said, now they want it. So they moved him to the operation theater. They started, then I went back to my office. So evening, they come. Okay, more crowds around the hospital, they also knew. So evening when I went, around six, seven o'clock. The doctors told me we had done the surgery. Surgery is successful. But beyond that, we can't say anything. So I went there and his uh, mother had come, Tehji Bachchan had come. And Jay Bhadri, they were all sitting in their room and their mother was crying. And uh, <clears throat> so I had to comfort them. I told them, I said, whatever is medically possible, physically possible has been done. Doctors say they surgery. So 50%, they successful. Another fifty percent in the hands of God. I had to tell them. They also doctors also told me that. So I told them. They said, "What do we do?" So you pray. If you have faith in this, you pray. That's all you can do. What else can you do? Surgery has been done. Yet recovery has to take place. Then they asked me, "You say, can you suggest a uh, name of a temple nearby?" So I said, "There's plenty of temples. There's a temple in which I have faith. But now you don't have to go to the temple. But you just pray that when he gets well, you bring him there." Thank you. Then I mentioned the name of Raja Rajeshwari Devastara on Mysore Road, where I used to go also. And there used to be a great uh, uh, saint called Tiruchi Swami. He's from Tiruchirapalli, but a very saintly person, 
he has gone through Christianity, Islam, all practices he has done. There are a few words, but yeah, people have a lot of faith in him, but he was very close to us. So we will go and say, no, just pray. Morning I went, morning myself, I went to the temple because there was a, and it was my father's you know, memorial day. So we always go to the temple, they do some puja, and we go to an orphanage and feed the children. And the morning when we were in the temple, we were going on, I heard somebody crying, falling at the field ground. Look back, that was one moment that I, the producer, so the, so he said, sir, uh, I, after my son was born, my wife died. That was 30, 40 years back. Thereafter, I never stepped into the temple. I had no faith. But today, I don't want this man with great potential to die in my production. So I please appeal to the Devi, take my life and grant his life. So he was emotional. Anyhow, we did puja and then took him to that saint, the Chishan, let's say for it. Then um, again, he prostrated before him, he started crying and all that. Then I we told him this position. Then Swami closed his eyes and just happened what closed his eyes for five minutes, went into Jnanam meditation, and he opened his eyes. He told him, he told us that he is in critical stage now. If he survives three days, he has got dirgoids. If he survives the next three days, he is going to live for a long time. He told me. Then uh, this Manmohan Das, I again prostrated, gave him a bank, bundle of notes. So he do puja and all He said, you take your money with you. Mr. Karthikeyan is very close to me. He has brought you. And then we will uh, we'll do Homa. He said, this is what we do. Humanly possible, we have done it. It's up to the divine now. We'll do from MDT onwards. It's a special Homa. We'll start today. Morning and evening, all you have to do is come and participate in the Homa, take the prasadam and give it, apply to the man, to the actor who was in the hospital. So we went to the Anada Ashram and fed the children. I went back to my office. Then we, evening I went to go and see more crowds around. It's very difficult to enter. Once I go there, Muntapach and lying, semi here. By the side of the table, I found two photographs. One is that of the Devi and the other that of the saint. And Mr. Abhita Bachchan had a lot of Tiruni Runa, holy ash on his forehead. They are taking the prasadam and all that. So it happened for uh, two days and, uh, and thereafter he had to be moved to Bombay. Mother was very keen that press should not take a photograph in that condition. But the press people you know, where hundreds were roaming around all the time for an opportunity. So on midnight operation, we have to shift him to the hospital through the back door. This is special flight was landed, chased by the media, but we did not allow any photo to be taken. They went away. So meanwhile, a couple of months later, one day I got a call from Manmohan Desai from Bombay. He said they are, he's all right now. He's fit enough to resume the shooting. And they are going to come to Bangalore. And both uh, Amitabh Bachchan, there was a request because you played a pretty critical role in that. We want you to and your family to be present for the shooting, resume shooting. But I then I was already in Mysore, I posted as a director of the police training college. I said, no, that morning I was uh, passing out parade, I have to be there, I can't come. Then they requested, can we take your family, sir? I said, yes, you are welcome. So they sent them. my wife and my children went and uh, saw the museum shooting. The shooting was whipped to a pillar in the Windsor Manor Hotel, and he's being whipped. That is the continuation of the shooting, which was uh, discontinued. And but then the previous day they had come, they went to the temple, they went to the temple through this milk pot, you know, it's a tradition. Went down to the temple, took part in all this uh, puja. Celebrations went to the Mahatma, that saint, took his blessings, had the prasadam there, and then happened. And uh, this is what happened now. It was a very critical stage. Faith or whatever it is, may say, it was a critical stage. He survived. The whole country, the whole world prayed for him because he was so popular at that time. Prayers were there in temples, mosques, gurudwaras everywhere because you know, he was an icon at that time. 
So later on it happened. So a couple of times we used to meet in functions in Delhi. So they used to be particularly she was very grateful for the role we played and all that. What I say is faith has an important role to play. And accidents, anything ups and downs can happen in anyone's life. You don't have to, you have to go with confidence now. You have to go with confidence and now you see what has happened in the last 40 years. He has gone higher, now he become a, a real icon, mega star for all time to come. So with all that, you know, it's new. It's only, you know, these are all episodes in life. Only is that you should not give, you should not be indifferent. I took my human aspects, right? It was not really part of my duty, you can say, but you get something concerned wherever possible, whoever it is, you should be concerned yourself, do your best, help them because it may turn transform them. It's not ultimately destiny, all right, you can say that. One thing, and never give up. Never give up. Keep fighting for it with all sincerity. So transformation will come, opportunities will come. So you have faith in God, in any, any faith in divine, okay. Whether you go to a temple or mosque or gurudwara or whatever it is, I believe in that. I have gone to all places of religious temples. I have gone to Jerusalem, Kailas Monastery two times. The holiest for the Hindus, you know, Jains, Buddhists, and even um, Sikhism. But I have gone to three times to Jerusalem. Three times to Jerusalem, I go to every place and all that. Ultimately, you will find the divinity is the same everywhere. But have faith in whatever you are doing it. Don't disown your own, you don't have to disown your faith. All of ultimately, the paths are many. Goal is the same divine. Ultimately, this meditation also where you, you take you to the divine power only, ultimately. Ultimately, the power is within you that you realize it also. I think we'll stop by that here. Any questions I'll answer, otherwise you proceed. Thank you, sir. That's uh, uh, multiple things that we can learn from this uh, incident. So you've been, in fact, seems to me that you have changed their decision because you've been so, perhaps you have been vocal or whichever way that you're able to change the decision to actually help Amitabhji right then and there as opposed to waiting for longer. And of course, in this whole thing, it was not, you said it's not your primary duty necessarily, but then you had, you, you spent the whole time, you gave your time unconditionally. That showed up when, two months later, when they asked you to come, you said, I have my duty, I had to go, not for going for a celebration, right? Your duty was there. So I think you have been so unconditionally given, given away and you took the right decision, right time, because you had your instinct so strongly. And then, of course, as you said, sir, you never give up. And then anything can happen anytime. So that's what we've seen. We wish uh, Amitabh Ji a great speedy recovery in this time too. Um, certainly, I always felt every time we looked at him, he's just done so much to the, he inspired so many people, especially in the, list, in the later part of his career. I think he's inspired so many people with his, uh, all those specific, uh, not ads, but and also messages. Yes, sir. and also one thing you see. Once I was traveling to Bombay, um, next to me was seated uh, Jita uh, Abhishek Bachchan, son. So I don't I don't know whether he was born at the time or not. Any of you recall the episode and all that? Then he spoke to his father. He said, "Yes, I am very grateful and all that." Then I, he told me, "I said I believe you walk to the." Siddhivanayak temple, the whole family, he said, yes sir, once a year we do it. We walk from home to the temple, some few kilometers, barefooted. We go there. He said, how do you avoid the crowd? He said, we leave, go at midnight or something. We go, we do it and come back because all of us go. He said, the whole family walks. Faith has an important role to play, you know, very, very important role in everybody's life, in whatever religion you belong to. Don't give up faith. You have to have, ultimately, you have to have faith in yourself all right. He said, What? The morning, of course, they said, We return back home. I see. Yeah, don't give yes, up sir. faith. You can have meditation, but you don't have to go away from your faith. Ultimately, it's faith in yourself. And, and sir, so for, as we recognize that when we say that intelligence is this, that it's there everywhere. 
the Chaitanya, the consciousness is there everywhere. And uh, that's what Aveda self said too, right? So, Tattva um, Masi, so you are that, I am that, and then it is there everywhere, right? And so that is what we are saying this quantum field, that intelligent quantum field, with an infinite possibility and opportunity, always paying attention, is that. Thing that we are going back again and again. When we connect in through meditation, we are connecting to that divine greater mind of ourselves, that faith, what you call, somebody else calls something else, but then it is in us. No, the Vedas, you know, it, Vedas said, Aham Brahmasmi. Yes. You are there. That is what ultimately you realize during meditation also. Exactly. So, so we, rather than giving up, I think we, we are becoming completely surrendering to ourselves as opposed to leaving to somebody else and saying it's not me, but then neither do we surrender. So the Bhakti Yoga says you surrender completely, then we are absolutely there. But then many few people are doing, they're doing out of fear when you're going to a temple. But if you surrender completely, some people go there in the prayer, they go so deep, they surrender completely. And then whatever they get, they take that and then implement in their life is fine. That's what we do in meditation too. When we become empty, we completely are surrendering. Then we receive messages, we use those messages into our life for the best possible thing because it's always paying attention to it us. So, yes, sir. So thank you. Um, in many ways, many things we can learn from this and then suddenly never give up. 